This is the new Aston Martin Valhalla, and it's the company's latest mid-engined hypercar. Now, it's also known as the son of Valkyrie, as whereas the Valkyrie is this hardcore track monster with a V12 in the back, this tries to capture some of that and bleed it into a more road-friendly car. Now, I don't have a lot of time with the car today, so this is gonna be a bit like a, a Ted's notebook of an Aston Martin supercar. So let's go and start it off at the front. This is very much inspired by the Valkyrie, but it isn't actually sharing the same underpinnings. It looks a little bit bigger, a bit more GT in the skin, but bearing in mind that the Valkyrie was such a hardcore track-focused car, this just basically makes it look like a more normal supercar. So let's talk some of the numbers. We're generating 600 kilograms of downforce when you're driving at about 150 miles an hour. So if you're on a bit of German autobahn, you will be absolutely sucked to the ground. And then at the front, you actually have active aerodynamics through the car. So when you are in the corners, you can get a little bit more downforce. What really separates this car from the Valkyrie though, is down here, we actually have a grill integrated into the front of the car. I just think it looks magnificent. So while the Valkyrie has got this massive duct where air goes through all the way back to the diffuser, down here we've got Aston Martin's signature grill, and I think it looks absolutely stunning. Now, a little bit further back, got absolutely gigantic brakes, but it leads us on to this cockpit. Now, this is a really interesting aspect of the car because it's only when you see both of them in the skin that you notice there's actually quite a big difference. So a Valkyrie has got a really tight Le Mans style cockpit to it. Whereas here, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, just to allow a bit more room for the passengers inside. And it's built around a new carbon monocoque. So while we can't actually go in, there's no cabin, unfortunately, to go through at the moment. What we do know is that the seat will be fixed, but you'll be able to change the position of the pedals and also the steering wheel as well. And knowing Aston Martin, it will be full of leather and expensive materials that will make you feel like a very rich person because you're gonna to need to be to buy this car. Just another little technical aspect I wanted to talk about as well. We've got multi-link suspension at the back of the car, but at the front, we've actually got a pushrod style system, which is very similar to what you see on today's Formula One cars. And that should make it a beast around a track. More on that a little bit later. But I mean, just standing next to this car, what an amazing presence it's got. We've got so many ducts and fins down here. But in true Aston Martin fashion, it doesn't look complicated or messy. It's a really smart and organic looking car. More fins down the side here to cool the engine. Now, when this car was originally unveiled, it was called the AMRB003, which was essentially its term for it was Aston Martin, uh, sorry, Red Bull developed with Adrian Newey's help. And it would also get a six cylinder engine. Now, Aston Martin is lo no longer affiliated with uh, Red Bull Racing, and it's also not building the V6 anymore. Instead, the company has much closer ties with AMG. So back here, we've got, you guessed it, a four liter twin turbocharged V8 engine. It has been slightly tweaked here though, so it is different to what you would see on uh, other AMG models. By itself, it produces 750 horsepower. But the Valhalla is a hybrid hypercar. So we have an electric motor at the rear and an electric motor at the front, and together they produce 200 horsepower. So 750 plus 200 equals 950 horsepower. Oh, ridiculous. Zero to 60 is gonna take you around two and a half seconds. And top speed, 217 miles an hour. But of course, we're living in 2021, you've got to be a bit more eco-friendly than that. So you can drive this thing on electric power alone for between 10 to 15 miles. Why you'd want to, I don't really know, but the option's there. Two rocket launcher exhausts poking out from the top of the engine and at the back, a Venturi so massive, I think I could actually slip and live in there. It is huge. I could turn it into my house if I wanted to. And also you've got these LEDs at the back here that is very Valkyrie, but I don't know about you, I'm also getting a hint of AMG Project One. 
anyway. Let's talk price. I don't know. I don't know how much this is going to cost. Uh, Aston Martin's not telling us at the moment. When this was first unveiled a few years ago, the price was in the region of a million pounds, and they say it's not going to cost that anymore. My guess is, with that kind of performance, we'll be looking at maybe 500,000, five, 600,000 for it to compete against the likes of the Ferrari SF90. Uh, the thing to bear in mind with that, though, is that SF90 is built around an aluminium tub. This is carbon fiber, so it'll probably be a little bit more expensive. They're only going to make it for two years, and we're looking at 2024 to 2025, so still a little bit of a wait for this to come along. This is a pre-production prototype, so what you see here is pretty much what you will see when the car goes on sale. Before then, though, they're going to take it to the Nürburgring, and they're targeting a 6 minute 30 lap, which is just, un and that would obliterate pretty much any production car that has lapped it so far, including a Porsche 911 GT2 RS MR. So, serious numbers, a serious car, and I can't wait to drive it. Shame I've got to wait until 2024. But you know what to do. In the meantime, why not hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos just like this one, and why not head over to yesauto.co.uk for all the latest car news and reviews. Until next time.